This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with still images in Apple Final Cut Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short excerpt, I'll show you how to animate still images and objects using Apple Motion. But what happens if I want not to have the shape line, the, the pen line that was drawn? If I didn't want to animate that, I wanted to have an object itself move along the map. A small car, for instance. Well, there I can't use the pen tool. Instead, this is what we end up with. Now the sharpness of the spins are caused by the sharpness of the corner. If I smooth out the path, I will end up with a smoother curve. Notice also the car starts out of focus, is now in focus, stays in focus until this bottom leg, and now the car is going out of focus to match the depth of field of the map. How do we create that? Well, again, we would go to File, New, we're going to create a motion project. We're going to set this to be 1080 just because I can pick, again, 30 frames a second because it makes the math easier. We'll keep it at 12 seconds and open it up. This time I'm going to import two objects. I'm going to import a toy car, which was a Pexels clip that I got from Pexels.com. And I cut the background out and set the car to be vertical. And then I'll bring in the background and click OK. First thing I'll do is select the background, go to the inspector, set the properties, pull the opacity down, make it worth looking at, select the toy car, put the toy car at the top where we want the movement to occur, click the rotate button so it's rotated in the direction we want it to travel, but the car's kind of big. It'd be useful if we could make it smaller, so let's scale it to about 60%. Perfect. So we've now scaled it. It'd be nice if we could add a drop shadow to the car because the sun is coming from the left-hand side. So we'll click drop shadow, show it, and we'll make it about 90%, nine, not 9, 90%. And we'll set it a little bit of a distance from the car, right about there. We'll change, there we go, right about that. And we'll blur it a bit so it isn't too dramatic. So we've got a drop shadow. How do we animate it? Select the toy car and apply basic motion motion path. If we look at the motion path by reducing the size of the frame, we see that there's the starting position, that red dot, and there's the ending position. Grab the ending position and put it where you want the car to stop, right about there. Then hold the option key down. This represents the start of the movement, the beginning of the project. This represents the end of the project. About halfway through, I want to have Put a keyframe, Option, click to add a keyframe, and put it there. Control click or right click on the keyframe, switch it to linear so it becomes a corner. And we'll add a keyframe here. Now we've got to select the motion path. And Option click, see how it shows up as a plus. Put that there and put this here. And now click on this to reveal the Bezier control points. Oop. I need to break that, so we're going to control click, break the handle, take that back to a straight line, and then control click here and break the handle. So I work just with this one and set this to be there. Click here, set this to be there. There we go, right about there. So now as I play this back, wait a minute, cars don't move sideways. So we need to add one more behavior. Go up to Behaviors under Basic Motion, Snap Alignment to Motion. And now the car is going to turn as the path turns. But it defaults to a horizontal movement. We don't want that. We want vertical. And I discovered that simply by playing with it. So now as we play this, now the sharpness of those curves would be resolved. Notice the car's going backwards. Huh. Let's invert that. So now that's the front of the car. We would smooth that out if I control click on this, select the motion path, control click on this and say smooth. Now the car is going to have a, 
a smoother curve, though it's not going to perfectly match the road. At least it's going to smooth out a bit. But wouldn't it be nice if I could also have the blur of the car blur with the map? And I wouldn't mention it if I couldn't do it. Go to behavior, oops, go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur. And with Gaussian blur, let's set that here. And under Gaussian blur, let's blur the car more, right about there, and set a keyframe. We want to have the car be in focus, right about there. So we'll set a keyframe and have the car be in focus. And we want the car to be out of focus, starting about there, and then totally out by here. And we'll just drag this right about there. And now as we play it, the car's out of focus. It comes into focus. Again, the sharpness of those corners determines how smoothly the car turns. And it's back out of focus again. Is that not cool? <laughs> and what it took us hmm, three minutes to create. So it's not as though we were spending our whole life putting this together. I could do very similar animation inside Final Cut. It would take maybe three times longer, and it wouldn't be quite as clean. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with still images in Apple Final Cut Pro. For the complete version of this training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 346. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.